everyone, everyone, if I can have your attention, please. Welcome! Even though you can't see me, I'm invisible, but it's cool. Welcome back to Excellency Shoutcasting. I'm Jake Kelton. You can't see me. This is Otter, though his name is wrong. We are the <laughs> truest form of NA production, and y'all, y'all better be impressed. Y'all better be really impressed, because this production is just way above your heads. I'm already very impressed. All right, let me make sure I change Otter's name to Wraith, and uh, okay. see if I can figure Perfect. out how to get my webcam. Oh, wait. wait Perfect. I got, I got two webcams going. Maybe that's what's wrong with this. Maybe that's what's wrong with this. Why do I got so many webcams running around? Huh? Huh? What's going on with this? Huh? I don't understand what's going on with this. All right, let's just let's just remove you completely. Let's just remove you completely and, and add in. But either way, uh, bands. Uh, Volibear banned away against Simon Volibear. Uh, it's a shocker. I'm gonna fall over dead. I can't believe it. And then Yasuo banned against Yasuo. I mean Boxy. Uh, basically the same thing. Um, shocker. Everyone should just fall over in shock. Well, you actually made my name right. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> 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 you know, Perfect. sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, don't even right. judge. Don't even judge. Oh, that's cool. Perfect. All right, guys, we got we got it now. We got it now. We're just all getting right. all the. Uh, thank you. All the here's the clap. Bands. Here's the clap because I always do the clap when I shouldn't do the clap. Everybody, everybody, do the clap. Uh, welcome to X and Shout Casting. I'm Jake Kelton. <laughs> I'm all that matters here tonight. Oh, uh, I know it's covering to be the whole screen. <laughs> I know this supposed to be fixing bands, but that doesn't matter because the show's about me. Hey, foul gesture! What is up? <laughs> How's your solo keep climbing with the uh, with the uh, Shaco? It's going. There's a Morgana band way and Rengar from uh, Blue Side. Doesn't matter though because uh, uh, you know I I'm just gonna cast so well you can see the game without seeing the game. It's great. All right, this is awesome. This is this is how League of Legends should be. Should we literally just be the casters? And then they're telling you what's going on. Okay, so we've also got Thresh Band against Cody Sugar Daddy. He is my sugar daddy. If Cody says to do something, I do it because I kiss his boots. Don't tell my wife. I mean, I kiss her <laughs> boots too, but <clears throat> Jake will never <laughs> notice. <laughs> emote only? That's. Uh, I wanted to know. I actually liked emote only. Yes, keep it emotes only. There's only emotes, guys. Only emotes. You have to. You have to express your love of the game. Only. Only. One G, <laughs> Molly. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll shrink me down. I'll shrink me down. This is. This is the, a good stream to come back to, guys. This is. This is good. The entertainment <laughs> value is just poggers high. Through the roof. That's all we got. Yeah. We don't have production. We just have entertainment. Yeah. Exactly. That's all we're here for. Exactly. What you thought? Guys, you guys were coming here to be entertained? No. No. Get on my level. Uh, all right, Wraith, how are we doing on the picks and bands? Great. We have Zito picking up his vein. Simon Volibear locking in the Sedge Wani. Intro locking in the Zed. Box is currently hovering. Or Zed, Ziggs. Now Box is hovering Zed. There we go. If he doesn't lock that in, that's going to be a rough matchup for the Ziggs. See if he actually ends up getting that. And he does. All right. Oh. Rough matchup for Ziggs if they're both mid. Other bands, we saw the Thresh band away from Cody. He's not going to have his champion that he <laughs> wanted. We will pretend. What is that? Oh, some thump? I don't know that one. That's awesome. I also love the well-played Nova. That's awesome. I know that's somewhere in the free ones, but it's still good. Still good. Uh, yeah, exactly. And the dabbing octopus. You got to have the dabbing octopus. And we might have two teams. Uh, could we do a normals in the meantime? Definitely. We just started game one. Cool. We might actually have two teams playing in game number two, which don't worry, guys. Well, we'll definitely have room for everybody to play. But um, Returned, the caster that I casted with last Wednesday, uh, has two teams that want to scrim against each other, and they would love to be shoutcasted. So you know what? Oh. You know what? We don't turn down the opportunity to cast some people. So we're going to we're gonna drag them in for game number two. They're going to go play in normals right now, which should be about the same amount of time. All right. With that vein, Zed, a Mumu lock-in from Cash for Gold. They're doing pretty good overall. I like the tankiness out of a Mumu. Zed for a nice assassination. Vayne, so good into tanks like the Sejuani pickup. Ziggs, Vigar, bringing out the AP. We don't need no AD on the side of Uwu. 
it's all about the cute anime AP chicks, which they don't have a single anime AP chick. It doesn't matter. It's cool. They Where's my Lux? Where's my Ari? Exactly. Exactly. Jana. Yeah. If you were to pick a top five hottest chicks league team to make, who would you put on it? Because I don't think I would include Jana. Jana's like regal, but she ain't cute. Kaisa. What? All right. All right. Kaisa's there. Kaisa's there. Uh, Kane is there because Kane is a cutie girl. Even though it's a boy. That's but... the best E girl. Oh, uh, Ezreal. Eagle champion. Ezreal, for sure. <laughs> Cute anime girls. Um, Ezreal. Lux. Derek. And so, no, Derek. No, Derek, Derek, Derek does not count as a cute anime girl. Um, Have you seen that pig skin? I mean. Eight armor of the fifth age. I mean, unless he's starting to. Timo, that's what I'm looking doesn't for. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, Timo is the adorable. The, every anime is required by the laws of the universe to have an adorable animal. Like, adorable furry to accompany the, the, exactly. this female. <laughs> every single anime has an adorable, <laughs> cute, fuzzy, annoying one. Punch them in the face and send them to outer space sidekick. And that's Timo. As Blitzcrank makes up the last anime e grill. Uh, Sugar Daddy, of course, the Hookmaster himself, picking that one up. Fiora, grabbed by Smartest for the top lane, rounding out that composition, looking overall pretty solid. They're lacking a bit on the AP. Possible, though, that uh, Amumu decides to go the anime AP route and uh, try to build full AP Amumu, which is possible right now. Not the greatest, but still possible. So, love the emote spam and chat. Appreciate all y'all. Mostly just Reeves and, and Nova showing the support, but we're back to normal. Whatever whatever Reeves says goes. Uh, as Caitlyn gets grabbed for Ubu, I actually really like Caitlyn into that composition, especially with that Sejuani ultimate locking people up, and Caitlyn can play back while Kane and Sejuani play so far forward. I know the ace in the hole does nothing, but it still looks cool when it flies in the near end of the team fight, unless she's already been assassinated by the Zed. Uh, there's some good stuff from both these teams here. Good stuff. Hey, it's Jace's. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Only subs now. <laughs> oh, only subs? Uh, am I subbed to my old channel? Let me check. Yeah, yeah I think I'm all right. You get one. I think I'm all right. All right. With these last couple of remaining seconds, we don't have to worry about any trades going down, I don't believe. So let's run through the players and their champions for the side of Team Cash for Gold. I love that name. That's probably my favorite name in a very long time. Zeno with the Vayne, 80 carry roll, Boxy on the Zed in the mid lane, Doc Shocker with the Amumu in the jungle, Smartest 2 with the Fiora in the top lane, and Excellency Sugar Daddy bringing out the Blitzcrank hook. He's the one and only Robocop gonna smash your face in. Okay, sorry, enough rapping. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm excited. Can you tell that I've got way too much energy? I got too much energy. I can definitely tell. <laughs> <laughs> As for the side of Team Uwu, we have Simon Volver playing Sejuani in the jungle, Intro playing Ziggs in the mid lane. CCO playing Vega support, Yoko Kai playing Kane in the top lane, Cosmic Sai playing Caitlyn in the bot lane. Eight carry roll. I didn't even realize that's Kane top. So tell me what you think about these teams, Otter. Uh, for a hundred bucks on the line, who would you say wins? No, I'm kidding. I don't have a hundred bucks to give you. <laughs> Not to say that it's you like... don't deserve a hundred bucks, but <laughs> it's interesting for both teams because. The side of Cash Gold doesn't have any heavy AP damage, they just have the movement like you talked about, but they have a vein, so they can just shred through. I think if Kane gets ahead, they just lose. Uh, they might just lose with Kane and Sejuani, because Kane can go red and then just be unkillable for the most part. Um, but I think it's if, if Zed gets ahead, he can really tear apart their team, because they have three squishies, being the Vagar support and the Caitlyn in the back line, and then the Ziggs. And then all you have left is your two tanks and the Bruiser and Kane left to team fight. So I think it's interesting to see who snowballs. The game's very snowball heavy right now. So if you manage to get some early kills, get ahead early, it becomes really hard to come back if you can push your advantages correctly. Yes, and especially with the changes to both the platings as well as they tried to make the bounty something that kind of slowed a little bit of that snowball, but especially with what you're seeing if you've watched any of the pro scene is that really teams are trying desperately to jump on the initial uh, snowball, get it rolling because it is still, even with the shutdowns and the bounties, 
it's still a lot easier to win games off of those snowballs. I think there's only two teams that I've seen that try to play hyper safe lanes until they hit about two to three items, and then they start to try to snowball. Same concept, you're just delaying it by about 10 minutes versus the other way where from the very get-go, you've got hyper-aggressive junglers like Zin Zhao or Graves that are diving into the enemy jungle or lanes very early on. That's basically why you always see Camille 100% banned in pro play is because she's like, level two, let's go! All right, let's see here. Yo, Smartest, you okay with me banning you for the amount of time I think this game will last since you won't be using chat? If I'm wrong, I'll buy you a skin. Uh, good luck with that, Reeves. I don't think that he's even here for you to ban. But you know what? If you if you feel like it, I, I suppose. I mean, maybe if he is here listening in and wants a free skin, that's an opportunity. Hmm. Between these two compositions, I honestly am liking Uwu a little bit better, even though I'm a big fan of Cash for Gold's name. And the reason why is that Vigar's Event Horizon is just so strong. Just, just ridiculously strong. And there's definitely opportunity to play around that. Um, between, it, it's kind of like situational CC between Vigar's Event Horizon, Caitlyn's um, Traps, and Sejuani's Ultimate. There's a lot of opportunity for some heavy CC. However, uh, I don't have my um, League of Legends going. Oh, this is good. This this is really good. Yes. This is, uh, okay. Oh, wait. There it is. It loaded in finally. That's weird. I wonder why it wasn't loading in. Hmm. Well, it loaded in. That's what matters. Just took a little bit longer than usual, I guess. I guess. All right. Take a look at these cool skins. We got Master Arcanist Ziggs, Odyssey Kane, because apparently that's his only skin. No one plays any other skin besides Odyssey Kane. Uh, Lunar Wraith, Caitlyn, is that where Wraith got his name from? And just dropped the W because no one says it anyway. Wraith. Don Chaser Sejuani. Firecracker Vein Prestige Edition Xeno. <laughs> Show it off the big bucks. Uh, SKT1Z, Surprise Party of Moomoo, Soaring Sword Fiora, Boom Boom Blitzcrank, we got the five-man skin from Blue Side, Cash for Gold! You know what? I think Xeno deserves that well and good. Uh, <sighs> hmm. Vayne Blitz bottom lane versus the Caitlyn Vigar. I actually still favor the, the, the Vayne and Blitzcrank a little bit simply because... Um, as long as they play back until Blitzcrank lands a hook, they could definitely win lane pretty hard. Wait, did you mute yourself? <clears throat> Otter, I definitely did not mute you. But I'm not hearing you right now. That's why I haven't heard you talking for a while. You are definitely muted on, on... I'm not hearing you, but you're not. it's not showing you. It's muted. What on earth happened? What on earth happened? I got this audio fine. Uh, that's weird. Ladies and gentlemen, technical issue. Reeves muted Otter for no reason at all whatsoever. We're going to switch to our spectator scene, which for some reason randomly uh, worked with the stream deck that time, probably because I did an update, which I desperately needed to do for quite a while. And I've got the zoom out feature once again, which is beautiful. <gasps> Thank you, Creator Suite, for updating. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. Um, all right. Let's, uh, Otter, let me try to call you back real quick. I'm just going to reset the call. Okay, so maybe it is on my end because I definitely see the no output device default. Let's try this. Say something. Hello. Hey, I can hear you now. Hey. I'm not exactly positive what that was, but either way, we got you back. It probably was on my end, something to do with the headset trying to read. I think Discord switched from headset output to default which then is trying to do something else because I've got a thousand things plugged in my computer. But either way, you're back. We're in game. Game number one, cash for gold versus team. Ooh, woo. 
as Uwu is going to be collecting that blue buff as a bit of an evade on the top side here. Fiora and Mumu successfully stealing away the red buff for Sejuani. So we might see some vertical jungling as Fiora and Mumu both headed into lane up there. We got some fighting in the bottom lane. Exhaust comes down onto the vein. We got an ignite onto Seize Seal. The hook pulls back to Caitlyn, forces her flash. So that is two flashes down in the bottom side as support of Vigor having to jump his way to safety. Yoko Kai also jumping away, burning his flash. That is triple flashes down for the side of Uwu. Yeah, flashes all over the board, and they got both thumbs from the Vigar. You talked about, so that's not going to be a fun lane. It's for them, or for Team Uwu. Ooh, hooked his land when it's two. If that landed, though, that was a definite kill. No flashes on either of the two bot laners for Uwu, so we have to wash on to that one. Could be some more action on that bottom side. Laning Kane. This is going to be interesting in the top. He started with a call, so he's going to have to play it really safe. And that's what I like from Smartest here, trying to play him out. Ooh. He's going to have to run through a wall to get himself the safety, but I don't think Smartest cares about it. Going to go and flashes forward. He's one more auto attack. It's it. And dashes away from the turret for first blood for the side of cash for gold. Great play there, realizing that he had that advantage uh, on Yoko Kai. He didn't have that flash available, so chased him underneath the turret using his own flash to get back. Kill, we see Sejuani trading away that a red buff, knowing that uh, Mumu sold hers away. So gonna go take his and try and get a little bit of XP back for himself. So keeping it even, maybe a little bit ahead for himself. He might try and come to the bot lane here. Uh, Sejuani, Simon Volibear looking to make a play. Doesn't have the ultimate, obviously only level three. The uh, boar charge, not gonna do that much. It's kind of more of a lion charge at this point with that skin. Blizzcar glance, oh, pulls her underneath the oh, turret. Oh, and that shot's and the not knock gonna up. be enough. All the heal. Oh, the heal and the turret didn't fire a second shot. So Vayne's gonna continue to chase forward. However, walks into three members, dodging everything. Left, right, back, center. It's a little bit of a what video game as the knock up comes through. on the Zaya, the Caitlyn trying to escape. The flash oh, forward the from Zeno. Last shot takes the kill. Two kills to cash for gold. That was super close. Both members were, of either team were fairly lucky to only lose. They were fairly lucky to only lose one person. I was just wanting. Oh, in top lane, though. You kind of going down again. Two smartest. 2 0 oh now. Good thing from that Kane was he was able to pick up some CS. So, this surprisingly, despite dying very, very early on, I think he teleported back to lane and caught that huge wave that Fiora was pushing in. So, he was actually ahead in CS. And Fiora is just keeping that up now. Still, three kills quickly to cash for gold. And we talked about the snowballing potential, especially with a vein who's already a kill up in that bottom side. Could see a pretty quick snowball from cash for gold. Yeah, all members of the team, if they can get ahead, we already see that vein in the bot lane getting ahead. The Fiora in the top side getting ahead can take over the game fairly, like, single handedly almost with the help of that Amumu getting that ulti down. Team fights could be fairly difficult for Uwu with three fed members of. In the mid lane. Oh, Intra flashing off to the side, trying to get a little bit more damage down onto Boxy. Wants the powered auto attack, not gonna get it. Now, Intra still has to run away from Sugar. Daddy finds a knock up. However, it's a Blitz Crank, doesn't have much damage. Can't go in any further than that. So they accept the flash and the barrier, both being picked up and back away, waiting for next time. As yeah, he forced to use both sums there as he did get ganked. The top side, though, Tom Involver is here to try and help out Yoko Kai. He's going to find the stun, and Kane's going to get the shutdown gold for himself. Good stuff there. Yeah, not too terribly difficult as uh, Sejuani once again brings a lot of CC to the table. My webcam's being all sorts of fun and useful. Uh, it's too high, it's too low, it's all over the place. I think I figured it out now. Uh, <clears throat> I was having a little bit of fun, though, with it as well. Sejuani, known for the CC and especially being able to join with that E for the melee opportunities on the Kane. Is able to lock down that Fiora. I don't think it was shut down. I don't think they got any bounties for it, but still nice to. They got 450. Oh, they did. Okay, so it was shut What's down. Mm -hmm. With the CS, is a Mumu bandit tosses himself, trying to get out. Has been slowed. Sejuani coming in once again. Oh, Sejuani! The Ignite comes through. Doc Tracker gonna pick up one on the Sejuani. Now they're gonna try to. I know mana for as well. He is got so low mana, and I think with that bandage toss from a Mumu should spell the demise of the cane as well. So. Quick strike back from the side of Uwu in the top side, and yet they turn around and lose two here in the mid as Blitzcrank Sugar Daddy steps forward inside the event. Horizon oh, finds the hook. a hook onto the Caitlyn Cosmic Zaya. No flash, no nothing. Xena picks up a second kill. Good stuff there across the board from Cash for Gold. Good collapse there from the Zed and the Amumu as he was gonna look 
as Uwu looked to collapse on him in the jungle with the Yokokai and Simon Polybert, but turned around, got two kills for the movement in the bot side, Trigger Daddy, pressing his advantage, playing Blitzcrank with the enemy team having no flashes is always the dream situation. Push forward past your minions and just drag them towards you, let your AD carry get the kills, and it's looking fairly rough for Uwu across the board. And something we haven't discussed is the fact that the very first strike of the game is an infernal Drake. Lots of action, lots of pressure from Cash for Gold. They could try to make a play on this bottom side. They have a Mumu, pretty decent tank early on into the game. They could try to pick up this infernal. Is in the bottom side to see Seal just getting a little bit of poke. Let's crank stepping forward, trying to throw out the hook. Oh, what is it again? again the flash used from Cosmic Zaya means that she will survive, but exhaust already burned. Those spells just continue to just get dropped. On the bottom side for Uwu, and very rarely is it able to save their lives. Is Boxy coming in on this top side, looking to make a play 2v1 on this Kane top. He's still level 5, he's got no ultimate available. Oh. However, that Tush Hurt shot will finish off the Zed. Yoko Kai making a play, and now Doc Shocker been to be caught out by Simon Volibear. A little bit of CC coming through. The Sejuani decides to bore rush onto the Fiora instead, immediately walking away, trying to bait them in as Kane is around the corner. He's got about half health, though, and no, not going to be able to happen. As smartest, beautiful play with that ultimate, able to get most of her life back, and now we can see another dive attempt. The last one failed. This one might be a little bit more successful. On the bottom side, Zeno stunned up on the event horizon, has to escape. Oh, oh the heal! Oh, the heal! Oh my goodness! Zeno gets out alive. Doc Shocker still in position. Does have the bandage toss, will miss. Yoko Kai doing what he can, but again, nice ultimate from Doc Shocker. Holds him in place until Intra joins forces up here as well but might be against three members zig's in trouble the satchel not going to do that much either intra has no flash has barrier trying to get underneath the turret knocked about the let's crank the barrier spot doesn't matter though smartest picks up a fourth kill just good stuff overall it was a good play at the beginning or at the beginning of all these fights for yoko kai uh, saving that dive still it was only level five when it happened and managed to outplay a boxy a little bit there get the kill for himself, but smartest on this viewer now four and one doing insanely well. <laughs> Welcome to Jake Customs where bullying is allowed because it's not visible. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. I know what's happening as the Ignite won't find the kill on the oh, However, a great condemn means Cosmic Zaya is gonna drop Boxy, cleans it up for himself. First kill of the game. Yeah, it's looking rough across the board, as I said before. We have Bane picking up a lot of kills. Zed going to get that kill for himself, as you said. Going to pick up some more items. Start tearing apart the back line. Yeah, the win condition for Uwu was definitely that Kane getting ahead, or at least doing fairly well for himself. But he is fairly far behind now into that Fiora. Tough matchup going to be going across for him. So it's going to be difficult for them to try and come back into this one. Uh, Boxy stepping forward, using that ultimate that onto now. Antra, uses the satchel, trying to get back to the turret. That's the Ooh, safety potential. Damage. And nice, causes the Zed to back away. However, again, think about Intra, no barrier. Has the flash up this time, though. And Boxy, without an ultimate, could give Intra the edge that this Ziggs desperately needs. It's about 10 CS up. Not much more than that in this mid lane. It's still pretty close. Intra doing a good job there. Uh, keeping that mid lane close, the one bright spot for Team Uwu right now is that mid lane zig. Yokokai might be in trouble here, he might be forced to back off as his turret is getting taken down. Yeah. He's gonna try and save though, ulti comes out. Smartest able to take down the turret, however the ultimate from Yokokai to get a little bit of damage, but the smartest is just outplay. Dash, dash, dodge everywhere, finds another kill on this top side but with that turret down yoko kai could try to make some movement to some other lanes maybe trade this bottom lane it's been having a rough time as sugar daddy is caught out in the river trying to run away oh. simon Volver locks him Great up with prison. the ultimate glacial prison bless a couple auto attacks from the zigs takes him down bombs work against robots as zeno now the target however he's gonna step forward he's one more auto attack take out the volo bear he's so low oh. this is the big viger ultimate finishes him off before he could get it and Sejuani is able to live for now. Boxy and Doc Shocker come in. However, the Sejuani is going to continue the recall. And with that bandage toss missing, that says, you know what? We're going to back away. Yeah, try to outplay that one. But Primal Burst uh, does a little too much damage. So 
not able to find the kill on that sedge. One of you loads the land on the Rockshocker oh, and a great curse of Mummy! I cannot believe that that bandage oh toss was my. able to land oh, the BM. seal goes down as Boxy. Does that little playful recall before backing is, yeah, we're getting a little spicy in here. There's obviously some people's attitudes that are getting a little, a little heated, a little heated. That was a crazy close uh, bandit. I didn't think it was going to land. I thought it was going to hit a minion, but did catch nice bandit shots there from Darkstar. Good play with his ulti to lock down to help Boxy pick up another kill for himself. Focus now onto the mid lane turret. That's top lane turret. First turret of the game already got taken down on the top side. Go ahead, keep casting. Oh, okay. Simon Bobber gonna get caught in the jungle. Picked up by Zeno on this vein. Now three and one. Almost has his he's going for that storm razor first. Gonna Almost has that completed. Yoko guy's gonna get stunned. Picked up Smartest on a rampage. Got another kill for himself. And Zeno finding a kill on his cosmic size. He went for go CS. Sugar Daddy gets the hook underneath the turret. And Ignite comes down onto Seal. But not gonna find enough damage as uh, Vayne wasn't around to help him out there. Was pushing that wave in. Doc Shocker gonna be pick up his uh, red buff. We just have advantage across the board from everybody from Cash for Gold. Might try and get this next turret as top outer or inner turrets, I should say, has gone down for it was not two turrets in the favor of cash for gold. Moxie can be picking up some more of that gold plating in the mid lane of an intra. So it's down about half HP, but said does so much damage that death comes out, but he has that stopwatch available, gonna keep himself alive. Smartest finds Simon Volibear in the jungle, blocks the bear charge, and gets another kill from himself. Now unstoppable seven and one. And the Cash Gold picking up that bot lane outer turret for themselves. Now a 10k gold lead. As Xeno might find Cosmosai again. Gonna get some damage on Ulti comes out. Oh, takes her down super low already. And gets another kill for himself. The Boxy in the mid lane. Fairly low. Should be able to just back off here. Back. Get some items. Next Cloud Drake of the game has just spawned. Or next Drake of the game, sorry, <laughs> has just spawned. It's Cloud Drake. Yeah, the Smartest jumping in onto Antra. The Satchel Toss will keep that Ziggs alive for now, but Smartest doesn't even care. Just going to keep pushing this top lane turret bit by bit. We see several members of Team Ubu who struggled this whole game. However, the flash forward from Volibear. Can they lock up this Fiora? They've gotten so much damage down. This might be it. They get it. And even the Ziggs gets the shutdown goal, which is a really good player to have it on as this Ziggs has the highest CS for the team as well as is really going to have to step up to be able to even start to bring this game back around. That shutdown is one way to start it off. I'm just reading chat. <laughs> this is, uh... Interesting. But they did pick up that Cloud Drake, and they're focused now on the mid lane. The turret planting has dropped, so they should be able to take this fairly easily. Blitz Green has that demolished available as well. I'm not gonna find the hook. It's not gonna event horizon, but should be able to go out. Oh, Flash comes out. Bandage from shock and ultimate from Amumu gonna lock up two members. Sejuani can't even get onto the Zed in time, and that's gonna be the ultimate from Zed. Pop! Caitlyn gone. Boxy picking up a rampage as the flash forward from Ooh. Smarter. She's got the damage down and locks up the Ziggs as well with a beautiful stun on top of it all. Doesn't need the ultimate for the heal. And this is a steam roll. So you talked about though at the very beginning of the game. Once you get snowballing, it's so hard to turn it around, even without a team member DCing. And by DCing, I mean leaving the game because he's totally unsportsmanlike. We don't do that. Yo, Kokai, we don't do that. You finally get to use the hammer. I mean, I think it oh, is already gone as Blitzcrank finds a nice hook, pulling the Sejuani out from oh, underneath the, the turret. The turret shot, oh, though, go going to hold the Blitzcrank in place long enough for oh, the Blitzcrank to go down. The other one for two <laughs> trade. Smartest is just 1v9ing at this point. Like, there really isn't much anyone can do to stop him in this top side. He's just going to win lane, push it all the way in, feeling a little bit like Deceit Seal and Darius at the moment. Yeah, Zeno still shoving down that bot lane now, picking up a bunch of farm for himself. So they have two huge members in their side lanes pushing both waves in, and then the group of three in the mid lane with that Amumu Zed and Blitzcrank having a nice 1-3-1 setup. 
that's what it wants to be. Well, that's what they're aiming for, but it is working out really well for their team. Uh, next dragon be in a while. See if it ever gets that point. Is going to be a Cloud Drake. So in situations like this, obviously it's it's super strong in one Loyalty team's favor. Totally rewarded. massive as uh, a Nova using a tier one sub. Greatly appreciate that on a one month streak. There you go. I love it. Um, oh, hey, Yoko Kai is reconnected to the game. Welcome back. I'm not sure. We'll see. Well, either way, glad that you have rejoined. Hey, and thank you for following Liquid Flow. Appreciate that. Uh, so, obviously, this game is massively on Cash for Gold's favor. Uh, they traded in that gold to get some extra stats, and as Vola Bear probably goes down to the Zed, eh, tanky enough to survive for now as he gets hit by the event horizon oh. and gets dropped! Shut down gold to the Vigar. Beautiful play there as uh, Vayne comes in. One, two, three, four. I declare a dead Sejuani. Uses the heal to make sure he goes down the exhaust, trying to slow the damage from this Vayne. However, the barrier keeps Ziggs alive. Double kill to the Vayne. Zeno chasing it in onto Cosmic Zaya, able to get over the wall for the moment, as well as trying to get back to the fountain. Doesn't get the last little bit of damage necessary, even burns the flash to make sure that she can get to the fountain time. In situations like this on red side, there's not a whole lot that you can do to get back into the game. But there are some things you can do that will help. Believe so, what, in, our future. in your opinion, uh, Otter can be done by red team to kind of decrease this bleeding of every objective on the map? Um, there's a lot of, as uh, Glitch Press have used to pick up a kill, there's a lot of shutdown gold on the map across the three members. You see 2,000 gold between Amumu and Vayne. So if you can find, uh, get some vision down around your outside of your base, like that ward we see there next to Smartest. The Smartest is trying to go in onto the rest of their team. Yeah, hey, just see Seal maybe going seal. down. Mumu comes in, oh. lost two members at the ultimate, and man, cash for gold sets the smartest up for a double kill as well as picking up one for himself. As I was saying, try and get some. <laughs> Did Red get a plastic surgery? So... <laughs> to try and get some wards around your uh, outside of your base so you can feel a little bit safer about walking out. Um, Walking outside of your base, feel a little bit safer. And if you can find a pick onto somebody, the one you're going to look for is that Vayne, uh, the seven and one Vayne with that a thousand gold. She is very squishy, even though she does do a lot of damage. If you can put some CC down with that Sejuani and with that uh, Vagar, you can keep her in place long enough to find enough damage to kill her, even if you are behind. But Foxy can find another kill here. Comes out onto Simon yeah. Polygar and Deathmark. Trying to flash to the fountain itself. The ultimate from Ziggs is gonna knock Foxy low as well as the Blitzcrank. Forced to flash away Intra. Trying to flash in to get the bomb to finish him off. <coughs> Even the turret drops the Zed low, but not gonna be enough. And now it's everyone against Smartest, who's just destroying each one individually. Taking turret shots, getting the heal from his ultimate as well. Is able to trade one for one at the moment as Sugar Daddy slides on and trying to get a hook down. Says, no, what? We're not gonna worry about that. Instead, we're gonna go for the fountain, the Nexus turrets itself. At this point, they might be strong enough to take on the Fountain. Haha, <laughs> JK. It does have a health bar, though. <laughs> As the second Nexus turret should be able to be finished off. Zeno being chased away. Doc Shocker finds a good bandage toss, and that should lock one, two members of the ultimate, as well as Zeno is trying to pick up a quadra kill. Here he goes, getting a little bit here, but it's actually a Mumu who picked up oh, another one, so it's a triple, out. and then out. falls as Simon Volabear will find one more rush onto Doc Shocker, doing what she can, but poor Volabear will not be able to find anything as the game will be going over to Cash for Gold's hands, which they basically had it from almost the very beginning of the game. They got those lanes snowballing. They got the victory snowballing. You can even see the tears coming out from a couple of players. Okay, we got a couple things to talk about um, very, very briefly. First of all, Liquid, welcome, welcome. Um, I got to make sure that I get this correct. It is the blue side that was able to get victory in that last game. Ahem. <clears throat> Liquid Welcome. We do these uh, custom shoutcasting games every Tuesday and Thursday. Normally speaking, they're games that anyone can play in. They are supposed to be fun games that are not meant to be taken hyper-seriously. I know Tuesday nights are a bit more of the try-hard nights when people try to bring out the best of the best, see what they got, but... We do not condone leaving the game, even if the game is terrible. And let me give you a quick explanation as to why. If you get into a normal ranked game 
and you lose lane, go 0-3, the game is not over. And you shouldn't, you could, but you shouldn't, just give up and say, I'm playing a ranked game. This is my your last promos to get into Diamond. And if I lose this, I'm back into Plat again. I really want to win this game. I've lost lane, gone 0 and 3. Yo, what? Let's just, yo, let's just quit the game. Let's just, let's just quit. Let's just get, you know, we're out here. And a guaranteed loss, guaranteed LP. Let's just do, no, you don't do that. You play your best regardless of how bad the game is. And why? Because you learn how to play from behind. You learn how to roam with teammates. We saw the Fiora drop multiple times when two or three members were on them. There's some really good things to learn, even if the game is going terribly. And I feel bad. I feel bad for the players that were on blue side because they got stomped. Or red side. They got stomped. It was a stomp. Trust me. I've been there. I've done. I've, I've felt that. It's never fun. But. But. Yes, there you go. Dapagod's got it. If you go 0-3, you keep going. Make it 0-6. No. Uh, but. If you are if you find yourself in a situation in which you're losing the game and things are going terribly set yourself a mini objective set yourself the objective of even if i die 10 times i'm going to outplay the fiora at least once i'm going to kill fiora just one time just one time and set yourself a small goal maybe you're losing overall but you say i'm going to group as five and sure fiora's going to hard push top lane get the inhibitor yeah because she's already basically destroy that lane but if we group five bottom lane let's take the bottom lane turret and then get the drake it's an infernal drake maybe that can snowball us into the mid lane try to grab the rift herald maybe make another play somewhere else collapse behind the fiora try something because if you try nothing you're guaranteed to lose if you try something you might learn a little bit okay that's all I'm going to say about that. Thank you guys for at least the rest of you that did try. Again, sorry, Cosmic Zai, you didn't have fun. Sorry to Yoko Kai that it was so bad that you felt like you had to leave. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is rough. It is rough. And trust me, trust me, I can talk to Yoko Kai post-stream 1v1. I'll, t I'll talk to him. All right. <clears throat> We got to talk about the overall MVPs and honorable mentions for this game because we do do that on Tuesday nights to make sure that we do honor those people that did at least do what they could do. So, Otter, give it to me. You got, you've had a little bit of time to think about it and look at the stats, hopefully, as I've been rambling away. What do you got for me when it comes to honorable mentions and MVPs for game number one? Uh, for the Luke T, T, Uwu, honorable mention going over to... Uh, I'm going to give it to to see Seal. On this bigger final picks, left, right, primal burst. Oh, wow, left and right. Found two kills himself. Primal burst, uh, doing a lot of damage. And Intra is going to be my MVP for Uwu. Uh, doing fairly well for himself in the mid lane. I think the only lane that was really keeping even with his lane opponent. opponent. Um, and then for Team Cash for Gold, MVP is going to, or honorable mention, I'm going to give to Exodus Zeno. On the vein, going 10, 2, and 2, doing really well with Cody. I have to give a shout out to Excellent Sugar Daddy in the bot lane, pushing that advantage with those hooks. Um, and MVP is going to be smartest, carrying the game through the top side. Yeah, yeah. that's all I got. <laughs> it's pretty simple, cut, dry, not too complicated. I got to give my own shout out to Doc Shocker on the. Uh, oh, that's true. I didn't even think, oh, no, Doc Shocker. I feel such bad. good. 7, 0, and 8. Obviously, very comfortable on this champion. Great bandage tosses, great ultimates hitting two, three, four members. Very, very good. Mummy and taking, I love the Frozen Heart who said, you know what, even though our team is lacking in a bit of AP, I'm still going to do what Amumu does best and basically be just a meat shield for my team. Be that target that annoys everyone. And when you've got champions like a Caitlyn and even Ziggs, who somewhat relies on auto attacks, that frozen heart is so nice. Um, mostly, I think it was just for Caitlyn. And because, you know what, why not? Let's build a whole bunch of armor. Um, I don't understand it against Deceased Seal. Maybe Kane? Hmm. Anyway. Anyway. All right. So those are your honorable mentions and MVPs for game number one.
but we are not over yet. Magic Chance, no, we have not watched that yet. We are about to. Let me go ahead and pull it up right quick so we can enjoy that between game one and game number two, which, uh, do, 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 as I figure out what's going on for game number two, because we might, we might have two teams playing game number two. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy this montage from our own, our own chance, and we will be right back. 